after the Lexington Alarm of April 19, 1775, 20,000 militiamen and Minutemen groups from across all of New England converged on Massachusetts and Boston in particular. They were outraged, they were angry, and they bottled up the British inside the city. By the middle of June, their numbers had swollen to the point that General Thomas Gage was concerned about their presence outside of the city. They were led by General Artemis Ward, who was head of the Massachusetts Committee of Safety, who on the night of June 15th and 16th ordered his forces forward to this position on Breed's Hill, which we erroneously call Bunker's Hill. His men erected a fortification on this hill that in the morning when the British woke up, looked out, were stunned, and knew something had to be done. After a council of war with his subordinates, William Howe, Henry Clinton, and John Burgoyne, General Thomas Gage made a decision. He was going to attack the American position located on Breed's Hill. And on the afternoon of June 17, 1775, which was an incredibly hot and humid day, thousands of British grenadiers and regulars embarked across Boston Harbor, disembarked on the shores of Charlestown, and began to assault the American positions here at Bunker Hill. Led by the courageous General William Howe, the British marched off in cadence to drumbeats and assaulted the American position. Thousands of British grenadiers and regulars massed in formation at the bottom of this hill. Inside the American fort, American militiamen trained their eyes and they knew the big fight was coming. They could see the green, gleaming bayonets, they could see the red coats. Allegedly, Colonel William Prescott, one of the defenders inside the fort, ordered his men to not fire until they saw the whites of their eyes. The British marched up in cadence, step by step, inch by inch, they got closer and closer and closer, and when they got within musket range, the Americans issued a withering volley that dropped the British in their ranks in their place, and they retreated back to where they started. Once more, the British marched up the hill. Again, this time, stepping over dead and wounded comrades, they made their assault on the American position. And once again, the Americans fired a withering volley into their ranks. The British once more retreated to their original lines. Finally, on a third assault, again marching over their dead and dying comrades, the British were able to penetrate the American forces, and a severe and fierce firefight broke out inside the fortification. Inside the fortification were several African Americans, including Peter Salem, who saw an officer. He drew a bead on the officer, fired his gun, and took down Major John Pitcairn, who had gained infamy during the battles of Lexington and Concord. The Americans broke and ran, but not because they were afraid, but because they had run out of powder and shot. The British won the field, but as Henry Clinton had said, it was a dear-bought victory. After the Battle of Bunker Hill, reconciliation between the American colonies and Great Britain was no longer possible. Benjamin Franklin wrote a friend in England, we were once friends, we are now enemies. The war had taken a fateful turn.